questions. High Representative, you. you have the floor. Uh, look, uh, you have already heard my interventions, I suppose, so I'm not going to repeat what I said in the plenaries. Just to stress the importance that 70, 70, 70 delegations from Europe and the Indo-Pacific has been gathering here. I, I want to express my gratitude to the Belgian Presidency and to the, Her Highness Prince Astrid for her presence. The fact that 70 delegations has come to Brussels shows the deep connection that uh, binds Europe with the Indo-Pacific from many points of view. From the economic, certainly, but also geopolitical, security, and environmental. We have been discussing about all these topics. Let me also stress why the Indo-Pacific region is so important for the European Union. You know, but it's good because people maybe don't know that every day, every day, 2,000 ships transport goods between the Indian Ocean and the South China Sea towards Europe. This is 60% of global maritime trade volume. We import from the Indo-Pacific region almost 40% of everything we import. 40% come from the Indo-Pacific. And we export there one out of four euros of our exports, 25%. And it's a very dynamic region. Last year, the Indo-Pacific region contributed with uh, two-thirds of the global growth. The dynamics of the world economy is certainly depending on what's happening there. Two-thirds of the global growth came from the Indo-Pacific. It shows how interconnected we are. But not only economically, also from the geopolitical and security point of view, we are interlinked and the pandemic shows that the shocks come from one region to the other. Also, the Russia aggression against Ukraine has been sending shock waves around the world and now the Red Sea situation is another epicenter of the crisis that affects all of us. We have to continue working on ensuring a shared prosperity, a green transition, and address the security challenges. And I think the European Union has a lot to offer. We are a transparent and reliable partner. We have done a lot of successes since the Indo-Pacific strategy was launched in 2021. Happy that I was able to finish this strategy. We will be part of uh, the heritage of the High Representative in this term. We have been building a strong network of free trade agreements with Japan, with Korea, with Singapore, with Vietnam, recently with New Zealand, and also economic partnerships agreements with Kenya, because Kenya is also part of the Indo-Pacific region. It's in Africa, but the Indo-Pacific goes to the coast of Africa. Somalia, Kenya, Mozambique. These agreements are opportunities for new trade and investment. They diversify and integrate our supply value chains, and we have to continue working on that. With these partners, and with India, we are working on the cutting-edge technologies, semiconductors, 5G, 6G, connectivity, regulation of artificial intelligence. Needless to say, how important is climate change? The Indo-Pacific is responsible for about 60% uh, of global gas emissions, and adapting and mitigating is the paramount importance. Uh, some members, some states of the Indo-Pacific said clearly that they have little or no one responsibility on climate change and, by the contrary, they are among the most severely affected, and that's true. We have their countries that have never participated in the Industrial Revolution, 
So they are not responsible at all for the emissions and the climate accidents are having a strong and devastating effects against them. It puts on the table the issue of the just transition. And we do a lot in order to make this transition just. We want to support some of these members of the Indo-Pacific area to develop a green alliance. We built one with Japan and Korea. We contributed with 500 million euros to support Vietnam's energy transition. Same thing for renewable energy projects in Bangladesh. And this is more or less what we have been discussing. Now we, we went to the pressing issue of the security and at sea. We discussed the recently established mission in the Red Sea, Aspidus, to protect merchant vessels. And right after this meeting, I will co-chair the EU ASEAN ministerial meeting, together with the Philippine Secretary of Foreign Affairs, Enrique Manalo, who was with us this morning. And let me say something about ASEAN. ASEAN is part of the Indo-Pacific. It's at the epicenter of the region. And we want to upgrade our relations. In 2020, we upgraded the relations to the level of strategic partners. In 2022, we hold a commemorative summit. And today's ministerial meeting marks another milestone. Thank you to our partners from the Pacific to be here. Yesterday, we held the Pacific Day hosted at the European Parliament. We signed recently the Samoa Agreement and the EU Pacific Regional Protocol. So there is a great political dynamism. And today meeting and tomorrow meeting, starting tonight, will be a proof of this dynamism for the good of the two regions. Thank you very much.